The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Harvest. I'm Valerie Lowe. Stephan Radulich is on assignment. We have an amazing show lined up for you, so let's just get started. Coming up on Harvest, if you've ever struggled with poor health and a not-so-strong faith all at the same time, you're not alone. Author Laura Harris-Smith reveals how a faith detox saved her life. And he's back. Pastor Mark Lance returns from a wonderful vacation with today's teaching, keeping the main thing the main thing. And Brian Bush isn't on vacation, but he certainly is in the beautiful city of Jerusalem with words of wisdom from today's Moments from the Holy Land. Plus, we want to connect with you. Join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, and you can send your emails directly to the set of harvest at liveatlessy.com. Up next, World News with Chuck Freebie. And a pleasant good day to you. It's Tuesday, June 7th, 2016, and here's what's happening in your world. Hillary Clinton will become the first woman to top the presidential ticket of a major U.S. political party, capturing commitments from the number of delegates needed to win the Democratic nomination. She has 1,812 pledged delegates, one in primaries and caucuses. She also has the support of 571 superdelegates, according to a count by the Associated Press. Donald Trump is not qualified to be president of the United States of America. But we can't, we can't just say that and assume everybody understands it. We have to make the case and we have to organize and mobilize. There are five primaries today, including one in California where Clinton attended a star-studded fundraiser last night. A bus carrying riot police officials was struck by a bomb in Istanbul today, killing 11 people. The dead included seven police officers and four civilians. At least 36 people were hurt in the attack. There is no immediate responsibility claim. U.S. officials told their Chinese counterparts that Beijing needs to provide a leveled playing field for companies to do business in China. Treasury Secretary Jacob Liu says the U.S. welcomes Chinese investment, but concerns about the business climate have grown in recent years. The annual dialogue between the two countries rarely produces agreement on major issues, but does provide a valuable setting to air disputes, clear up misunderstandings, and share experiences. Thousands of people pelted government buildings with paint bombs in the Macedonian capital, even as the president there rescinded a decision to pardon a number of politicians being investigated for wrongdoings. The protesters have been demonstrating almost nightly since President George A. Ivanov announced a decision to grant presidential pardons that halted the criminal proceedings against dozens of people. Those included high-ranking politicians accused in a wiretapping scandal that has roiled Macedonia for months. And heavy rains from Tropical Storm Colin have hit northern Florida and southern Georgia, knocking out power in some areas and flooding roads on the Gulf Coast. Governor Rick Scott of Florida has called a state of emergency for some portions of the state as the eye of the storm is now about 150 miles northeast of Jacksonville, passing into the Atlantic. Tropical storm warnings are now in effect for parts of Georgia and North Carolina, but it's expected Colin will weaken by tonight. Coming up later, Pastor Mark Lance has today's connections. But next, have you ever struggled with poor health and a not-so-strong faith? Author and nutrition counselor Laura Harris-Smith shares how a faith detox saved her life. She'll tell you about it right after this. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more. Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner.
Order in Faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit Lacey.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. After parenting six kids, co-pastoring a church, writing and speaking, Laura Harris-Smith was on the brink of adrenal failure and could have died. She didn't even know it. Today, she's a certified nutritional counselor, and she joins me to talk about what led to her dramatic transformation. <laughs> Welcome back to The Harvest Show, Laura. Hi, Valerie. Thank you. Okay, so it's been a, a hot minute since like you were here with us the last years. time. Yeah. So a lot, a lot has transformed over that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. You nearly lost your life. Take yeah, us back I to did. that time, being a parent of six kids. I only have one <laughs> child, but I'm from a family of eight kids. So okay, I so can, you know. So I can, I can only yeah. imagine what that must yeah. have been like. And you can't forget the eight grandkids now. <laughs> so that in the mix, you know, when that happened, I guess like nine years ago, yeah, we have a king-size family, king-size life. Uh, I love every bit of it, but when you're a writer and when you're a pastor and you have a lot of people in your home, um, you know, it's kind of hard to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so really I would, gosh, I'd put on a pot of coffee at midnight and get another creative streak going. And once I was finally alone and had some quiet time and I was getting probably four to five hours sleep a night, mm -hmm. I kind of wore it like a badge. Like some people can do that. You know, I can do that. And, um, boy, oh, yeah. I started and having symptoms. Especially as a woman. That, as a woman, you and know, we multitask. That's and, right, yeah. and we want to accomplish it all. Mm -hmm. And you're right; that's the badge of honor when it all comes mm -hmm. together. But mm -hmm. we're falling apart secretly. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't know that because I have a strong constitution, and I just kept going and plowing through, which was part of the problem. And uh, yeah, then little by little, the symptoms started showing up, and went to the doctor. My blood tests were just a ride; they were everywhere, all my levels for just about every organ system. And so I was told I had uh, adrenal exhaustion and stage four is when all your organs shut down and I was in stage three wow. before I ever found out. So mm -hmm. I was told make changes or die. I went on total bed rest and I was actually in the middle of a book contract at the time. And I, I had this sneaky feeling that the Lord, once I got well, was going to cause me to write about all this. <laughs> he, was, he was requiring me to cooperate with him. Mm -hmm. He's done miracles before in my life and my body. But this time he really required me to make changes. Um, so once I got better, I went back to school and became a nutritionist. But so. not only did you make changes with your physical health, mm -hmm. I mean, you say that, I, I thought this was a very powerful statement <laughs> that you made. I'm not sure everyone will agree with us, <laughs> but you said that your natural health, your yeah. physical health is almost a byproduct or a symptom mm -hmm. of your your faith, a weak oh, yeah. faith. So kind of oh, yeah. unpack that for us. Well, Harvard, it's interesting, Harvard Medical Center did a uh, study where they have linked the brain mm -hmm. with the stomach, so much so that they are saying that they should be one organ system. If you think about it, when you have stage fright, which is up here, your stomach gets nauseous. Oh, and you sure. know, So what you eat affects your brain and what's in your brain affects what's in your stomach and 70% of your immune system is in there. So uh, this connection, what they call the gut-brain connection, I set the hypothesis in the book that, that truly if what you eat affects your thoughts and if the Bible says that your thoughts, thoughts affect your faith, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, then what you eat could be affecting your faith. You could be you know, chemically propelling yourself towards doubt at any time. Well, I can certainly see how you make the case for it then. Mm -hmm. You said that there are like five toxicities that, yeah. you know, that we suffer from. What are those yeah. five? Well, there are really five categories. As pastors at, at Eastgate, where we pastor in Nashville, I began to notice that when people came to the altar for prayer, their prayer requests fell into one of five categories. Okay. And it was either their finances, their health, their relationships, their purpose and identity, you know, what is my purpose in life? Uh, and their social influences, things that are going on in the world around them. So what I did was with the 30-day platform, I really split those 30 days into those uh, down into those five categories. And we spend six days each dealing with these 30 faith toxins um, that are common to everybody, whether it's a failed relationship, you know, can't seem to get ahead financially, maybe a loved one that died, even though you prayed anyway for them, these mm -hmm. things that constantly chip away at our faith, because really it's a book about faith. Okay, so tell me about the 30-day faith <laughs> detox, because at first I thought we were just going to talk about faith, but yeah. as I began to read your yeah. book, I realized mm -hmm. there is, you know, there's a connection. There and is a right. connection. Valerie, 
when God created man, if you just go back to the garden, which is interesting because when he created us, what did he do? He plopped us down in the middle of a garden. garden. So mm -hmm. um, he created us three parts, just like he is. And so he's the Trinity, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He said, let us make man in our image. So the Trinity was already hard at work there. So we have three parts and you cannot segregate them. So yes, it's a book on faith, uh, but it is with a three-pronged approach. So you get up every day and you read a devotional on whatever this faith toxin is. Let's say it is a failed relationship. Uh, those are the days when we're, we're setting those six days, really diving deeply into you know, your relationships. And so we get up, we have a devotional for your spirit, tether you to the word of God concerning that situation that you're in. Or if it's over and you've come through it, how did you do? Is your heart clean? Are you all mended? Then we turn our attention to your emotions. And there are healing prayers for maybe the residues from that situation. What if it was a, a church split that you went through and there's grief and anger and bitterness? You need to confront those things and get rid of them. And then we'll turn our attention to your body. And so interestingly enough, we're detoxing the heart that week and your cardiovascular system. So by the end of the 30 days, you will have detoxed all 15 major body systems for a total body detox. So we're, we're really calling it a reset button for your body, mind, and spirit. Okay, how <laughs> much responsibility does the church have in you know, jump-starting mm -hmm. this whole process of getting congregants to mm -hmm. go on a faith mm -hmm. detox? Because let's face it, you know, a lot of chickens have died that I might live, fried chicken. <laughs> and I ate most of it right there at church. Girl, I mean, I'm from the South, you're right. <laughs> So kind of talk about yeah, the do. church's responsibility. Yeah. As pastors, my husband and I, Chris, we pastor a church. And I honestly, um, I, I think we have, in the 90s, we did a great job teaching people about spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the decade following, we really taught people about emotional welfare, uh, warfare, the battlefield of the mind. But I don't think we've done a great job uh, on physical warfare, warfare, bodily warfare. And so honestly, I just... I just feel this conviction. I, I feel it resting on my shoulders um, as someone who walked through it, that we are putting ammunition in the enemy's gun when we do not take care of our bodies. And, you know, Scripture says very clearly uh, in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? It's the way I talk to my kids when they forget something. Like, do you, do you not know I told you to clean your room or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, and so really he, he knew by saying it that way that it was going to be easy to forget. We have to take care of ourselves physically. Okay, so how does this differ from the juicing that we hear about? Mm -hmm. You know, it's all the rage now. Yeah. It's a trend. There's a lot juicing. of good books out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, they basically cover the human body. But if we want to be whole, we can't just mm -hmm. treat one-thirds of ourselves. We have to treat two-thirds, three-thirds uh, three uh, whole, you know. But we definitely um, tried to give the extra winning advantage. So I actually created 30 online videos, and the link is in the book, on the last page of the book, just a special gift to my readers, shot from the, the my own kitchen, um, kind of baby-stepping you through it, giving you that extra advantage to get it done. Mm -hmm. And when a person reads uh, the 30-Day Faith Talks, detox, what would you want them to walk away with? I would want them to walk away with a restored faith. Those things that the enemy throws at you so that your faith is a little diminished. You know, you pray for somebody and they don't get healed. And then the next time somebody asks you to pray for them, you think there's a voice that says, it's probably not going to work. It didn't work the last time. We have to confront those things. So yes, I'm happy to hear about the physical side effects. People are losing weight. I'm hearing reports of 10, 15, 20, 25 pounds in the 30 days and I mean I chalk it full of protein and water so it's not water loss or you know it's not it's not muscle loss what's happening is that when you treat body mind and spirit you're reaching for different foods you're mm -hmm. not reaching for comfort foods anymore and you are cleansing your spirit and that's what I want people to walk away with is that we're three parts and they have to all be whole okay so Laura there's someone watching plenty of people who are probably <laughs> watching saying I want to go on a faith mm -hmm. detox I just don't even know how to get started. That's number one. <laughs> number two, how can I not let it just fizzle out? Yeah. Because we all make a resolution every New Year's right. Day and it fizzles mm -hmm. out within a month. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say I can't do it because I work. Mm -hmm. So what you need to know about me, and you can ask any of my six kids, is I hate the kitchen. I, it was my <laughs> lot in life to have to, you know, prepare 24 plates of food a day for, for wow. people when the children were growing up. So it is a very easy program, and you're not going to go hungry. You eat mm -hmm. five or drink five times a day. 
Nothing tastes like dirt, you have my word. Um, <laughs> so it is easy and I offer suggestions for people who work. I, I created it to where it's really turnkey. Okay, so you said eight grandchildren you have? Yes. Okay, so she has six kids and eight <laughs> grandchildren. Whatever this woman is eating, I want Aww. to eat it. <laughs> you look amazing. Aww. To connect with Laura, go to lauraharrismith.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to her new project. It's called the 30 Day Faith Detox. Still to come, Brian Bush with Moments from the Holy Land. But up next, Pastor Mark Lance with today's connection. We'll be right back. What if I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at La C Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at lacy.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. In the last 15 years, friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles to anyone who requests a copy through our Spread the Word ministry. God has certainly been working powerfully through your support. The Book of Romans says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That's why we're so thankful for your partnership to help us take the best news of all time to more of those who are desperate to hear it. It costs just $5 to send a Bible to someone hungry to read it in Africa, South America, or many other places around the globe. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Somrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. I've got a very simple message for you today and Thursday here on Connections, and it's this. We have to keep the main thing, the main thing. And that main thing, the core message of Christianity, it's the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. I feel very strongly about sharing this with you because we're living in an age of epic distraction. We're distracted from what's most important in our lives on every side. It seems as though we're suffering like atrophy of the mind because we are so distracted by emails, by text messages, by social media posts. It's distracting us from that which is most important. I mean, how many times have you been at dinner with your wife and you've checked your phone for an email or maybe a text message? It doesn't really matter how many people have liked your latest social media post. We're so distracted by things in life, and I believe the church is suffering distraction as well. So many things attempting to take us away from our core message, and that core message is what Jesus did at the cross. And that's why today and Thursday I'm sharing with you the words of the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. He said, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing I want you to notice about the words of the Apostle Paul is this, his passion for the cross. He said, but God forbid what strong language he uses. He said in the earliest days of the church, the cross was not only perceived as an instrument of torture and death, but it was also a symbol of utter shame. It was common for people to consider Christians mad for believing that God would actually be nailed to a cross. The ancient historian Plinius Secundus called the preaching of the cross a perverse and extravagant superstition. He said that Christians suffered from a mentia or a mental disorder. The orator uh, Silesius, who was a contemporary of Marcus Aurelius, said that Christians suffered from a sick delusion, a senseless, crazy superstition. Not amongst the least of these was the monstrosities of their faith that they worshipped one who had been crucified. Yet in the face of this so-called delusion, it was a passion that drove Paul to preach on when everyone else thought that he'd gone mad. Something happened that day when Paul met Jesus face to face, the one who had been crucified for him. Paul had an encounter that pierced his soul, changed his life, created within him a passion that would not die. 
Friend, I want to tell you today, you might be going through the darkest time of your life. You might be going through turmoil, through trial, through tribulation, but I want you to know there's a passion that rises within you when you see Jesus face to face. When you come back to the cross and you realize what Jesus has done for you, I want you to get a new passion today. Come back to Calvary. Look at Jesus. Look at his sacrifice. See what he's done and you will make it through the dark times of life. This family just arrived from South Sudan. They've fled conflict, violence, they've suffered great trauma as well as loss. That's why we need your help to give a promise to these children who are refugees that they might have a future and that they might have a hope. We need you to act today. There are 50,000 children that we need to add to Every Child Every Day program in this year of 2016. That's why it's so important for you to contact us today. Hello, everybody. So good to be with you. I am standing right now in the dry, desolate desert. Now, why am I here speaking to you today from this isolated location? It's because I want to emphasize that sometimes in our busy, pressured, cluttered lives, we've got to get away from it all. Why? Because we need to clear our mind of all the noise and take in the basics that God loves us, that God created us, that God is our provider and our protector. Friends, out here in the desert, you understand how important water is. If you can't tell, it's really hot right now. How important water is. And so too in our lives, wherever we may be, Jesus Christ, the living water, is so important. And out in our busy lives, sometimes it's hard to take that time to drink of that living water. So you don't necessarily need to come out to the desert, but you do need to periodically get away from it all and drink of God's goodness through His Holy Spirit, His written word, and times of prayer. That's my encouragement for you today. And friends, I love being out here so much. I'm going to be here next week with you to share in moments from the Holy Land. We're going to talk about practical tips for Christian living. I hope you join me. Bye-bye now, friends. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. Watch the most inspiring guest interviews right here. Watch my weekly video updates from Israel. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. A lot of people say, is Pastor Mark Lance really as nice as he appears on TV? <laughs> well, there's at least one person who's been fooled into that because she's <laughs> married to him. And uh -huh. Happy anniversary. Oh, was, this, was this a major anniversary that this was, was being major. celebrated? 25 when years. Wow. wow. Last Wednesday was 25 years of marital bliss. And so you decided to take your beautiful bride and yes. go down to the Bahamas? We it? went to the Bahamas. To beautiful, suffer for Jesus. Beautiful. Oh, it was such <laughs> such a trial and tribulation. <laughs> well, but we her. did it for the cause of the ministry. <laughs> Look at that. We had a beautiful time. Beautiful time. It was just a gorgeous place. The culture is beautiful. The people are beautiful. And uh, it was a great time away. So what's the key to marital mm -hmm. success? Learning to put the other person first, put your own desires behind theirs. And sometimes that takes you maybe some discipline a little bit, but when you just prefer the other person more, I think that just leads to a good relationship. Well, I don't think that was the question for the it was Ask not. Pastor Mark segment today. <laughs> it was not. But we, got a, a we got a bonus question in today. <laughs> so now we'll turn to the ever popular Ask Pastor Mark segment. You can email your questions at live at lacy.com. You can also go to our Harvest Show Facebook page. But this question actually came in through the Christian Center Church app. 
And they want to know, Pastor Mark, what does the Bible say about being an organ donor when you die? I don't think they're talking about the church organ either. No, no not, 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 no, the, not the word of church. This is a really interesting question. <laughs> but it's a, yeah, and I've been asked this a lot, actually. And the Bible doesn't specifically deal with organ transplantation right. because... Obviously, it, it wasn't. It then. didn't have it back then. But I think when you look at the overall principle that Jesus taught us of preferring our brother, loving our neighbor, look at the scripture where even the Bible said Jesus gave his own body that we might be saved. When you look at that principle, I don't believe that organ donation when you die really violates any scriptural principle. Now, some Christians will argue and say, well, aren't you mutilating the body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit? They quote 1 Corinthians 6. But at that time, Paul was writing to Christians who were alive because he said, your body and your spirit. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing is, <clears throat> people say, what about the resurrection? When your body's resurrected, is God going to take your kidney from <laughs> someone else and bring it back into the body? But you see, that's not, our resurrected body is so different than our physical body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 15 and 44 said, we have an earthly body, we have a heavenly body. And so this earthly body, the flesh and blood that we have is not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And so you really can't use that argument either. And Pastor Mark, we wouldn't even be having this discussion if it were someone alive and they had to give their organ to a, uh, you know, a loved one, like a kidney to a sure. loved one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And that's why I think really the biblical principle, there's no violation of it at all. And I think it would be a very positive thing. And I know, and actually the addendum to this question that this person sent, what if I receive the organ of a sinner? Is that going to affect me? <laughs> no. No, oh, it will not affect you. <laughs> I know that is. Yeah, exactly. No. They were using the example of a heart. What if I get the heart of a... Well, the heart, of course, does not refer to that pumping right. organism. Organ. Okay, it's mm -hmm. the spirit. It's the soul of man. Well, we only have about 45 seconds left. Won't you pray for our viewers and listeners? Amen. Today? Let's pray together right now. Father, thank you that you've created us wonderfully. You created us, Lord, body, soul, spirit. We want to glorify you today. And for that person that's watching, I pray your blessing. I pray your favor. May their faith rise in you in a new way today. And we give you praise as we glorify you for all that you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, reminder, 1-800-365-3732 is the number that gets you into the LC prayer line. You can always email them at prayer at .com and take your concerns to our prayer warriors. We had a great show today. Can we do better tomorrow? The only way to find out is to tune in. We'll see you then. <laughs>